19, we do encounter some problems as most of us also encounter by other families. But with Circuit Breaker, we do meet up, though we do meet physically, but through Zoom, at least once a week. For us, uh, the COVID Circuit Breaker period is uh, something memorable for the kids. It was it's something their generation will remember for a lifetime. So we are looking for teachable moments. We are teaching them about the global situation, what countries are doing, and locally how it affects families, their jobs, and how we can then pray for our leaders, the people, and uh, help people in a practical ways. For example, charities or uh, just blessing the delivery person. As a, as a dad also, um, we're doing mundane things at home, things I can do with the kids, teaching them, doing science experiments, cutting the boy's hair, grooming the dog's fur, um, fixing things, um, to playing with them and even cooking and eating. I think the most important thing is that uh, we're able to spend quality time together as a family. Hi Church! My name is Derek. It's been such a blessing to be able to see all these memories that we've enjoyed with our families. And we remember our journey of Heart for His House to champion the honour culture in our home as one church family. It is our privilege as his church family to carry his heart. Every one of our families and our stories matter. In about two weeks, we celebrate our fathers in the house. We want to invite you to put together something special for our fathers, both biological and spiritual. First, join in by showing us your most cherished memories with your dads. You can send in either photos or videos from your past or childhood moments. Besides that, continue showing us how you've been making memories this circuit breaker with your fathers, as well as your families. Every moment spent is precious. You could be eating together, exercising together, or simply enjoying each other's company. As you share these moments, we'll be compiled together to bless our fathers in the house. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at 644-55566. Have a beautiful week ahead and be blessed. Good morning Church, my name is Alvin, I'm one of the pastors here at Emmanuel and we are so glad you can join us for our online service today. For our online service today, we're going to do something different. Our worship team has put together an item with the song, See a Victory. I'm going to read to you a couple of lines from the song and it says this, I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. When we hear a song like this and see lyrics like this. We believe that God is sovereign and still Lord over all. We believe that God holds us in the palm of His hands. We believe that God will restore what is stolen and He will mend what is broken. So as we hear the song, let us respond and be ministered to by God. Amen. Cause the God I serve knows only how to 
Today we're going to take out our offering and offering is not just singing but it's also the giving of our lives. Today when we give, we're not just giving to the church, we're giving through the church as well. Let me give you an example. When we give to the maintenance of our building, it creates a shelter where the homeless can stay. So today when we give, let's give a purpose and meaning and that's our act of worship to God. You know, what you can do is that you can pause this video, you can take out your mobile app for your banking, you can open the app and then you can scan the QR code in order to give. As with every first Sunday of the month, we'll be partaking communion together as a family. However, today, we are going to do it a little differently. We'll be taking communion during our message. Okay, so we are on the final week of our series, Family Matters, and I trust and believe that God has spoken to all of us through the sermons online. So let's open up our hearts to hear what our speaker, our senior pastor, Pastor Mark, has to share today. Hi Church, great to have you back again and joining us for our online service. You know, today we conclude our four-part series on the community, the church that God intends for us to run according to His way. You know, Pastor Elvin started the series with a great message on a strong church, the community that connects, the community that commits, and the community that contributes. And then that was followed by Ailan and she shared a great message, a powerful, impactful message, whereby she talks about a community that have intergenerational people right across. 
she talked about the families, about the need for family altars, whereby foundations are laid, whereby legacies are even laid forth for not only the, the present generation, but for the generation that was to come. And last week, Leon did a message. I love the message. It was entitled, Trench Buddies, whereby he began to share about the importance of us learning to walk together with one another, about caring, about supporting one another. And more than that, he talked about us needing to look beyond ourselves to the people around us and even to the community. So today, I want to conclude the series and I hope to bring to you a message that, that tells us that we do not exist on our own for our own sake, but we belong to a greater community. I've entitled today's message, Antioch. Why Antioch? Well, Antioch, if some of you may know, it was a place where the believers and the followers of Jesus Christ were first called Christians. And this was significant because at that point of time, there were Jewish believers, there were Gentiles who came to, know, who came to the faith. And in Antioch, they were all united under the um, umbrella of being Christ followers. That's why they were called Christians. And Antioch was also the place whereby the missionaries were sent out to the Gentile world. So it's an amazing thing. So today, we're going to look at what our church exists for. Today, we're going to read from Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1 to 8. Let me read this to you. Follow along and, and I'll be emphasizing certain words that I want you to pay attention to. Let's read together. Romans 12, verse 1 to 8. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exalts in exaltation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. An amazing eight verses. And I want to just start by looking at the background to Romans 12. And let's look at Romans uh, 1 to 11. Paul wrote a long letter and for 11 chapters, he covered something that was so essential. In those 11 chapters of Romans, he began to remind the listeners, the readers, who they were, where they came from. That we were all, at the end of the day, sinners saved by the grace of God. Regardless of whether you were a Jew, whether you were a Gentile, because of what Jesus has done, we've been brought into this family of God. You know, so it, this is important because it was a starting point before he goes on to the rest of Romans. Then when, so when we go on to uh, verse 1 and 2, Paul starts off by saying, I beseech you, therefore. Therefore is a, almost a summary, of, a summary word that, that speaks of Romans 1 to 11. Paul was telling them, hang on, before we go on to your purpose and what you're going to be doing, please be reminded where you came from, that we all belong to this one family. And it says, therefore, present your bodies. Because of what God has done for you, God has done for me, we ought to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, not dead sacrifice, but the living sacrifice that will honour Him, that will worship Him with how we're going to live. Then verse 3, 
Paul goes on to verse 3, which is very important. Paul talks about how we ought to think. How we ought to think. You know, and Paul starts off again with a very important fact because it's not about the doing, but when our thinking is wrong, we are not going to be able to do the right things. And Paul in verse 3 says this, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but to think soberly. Paul was, Paul was trying to say, Hey, if you're more skilled, if you're more gifted, you're more favoured than the others, please, don't think of yourself more highly than the other people. He was bringing them down to earth that, hey, remember if you are more gifted, more skilled, your more favoured is because God is the one who have done that for you, who have given that to you. So do not think yourself more highly, but think soberly, think sensibly. When we can understand why Paul said this, because as we go on to the rest, of how we ought to live out the gifts that God has given us, we must make sure that we think correctly. Verse 4 to 5, Paul talks about all of us, there are many members, but there is only one body. Many members, but one body. There is only one body to which we belong. There are many members, you, me, our cellmates, our zone mates, our church members, and even let me tell you this, the brothers and sisters from the other churches in Singapore, all over the world, the preachers that comes by, we all are many members of this same one body. And very significant is the last part of the sentence. It says this, each do not have the same function. We are individuals created differently and we are created with different functions, a different purpose, right? So we each have a function that is needed for the body. And that's why Paul goes on to say, subsequently, he says, we need to use these gifts that God has given you. You know, the, the, some of us are, are, are so talented. Some of us are made to be so good looking. Can I tell you that, that you are not made good looking so that you can admire yourself in a mirror, but you uh, make good looking, you have a great voice, you have a great skill set. It is to bless the body and not to make yourself feel good. Right? Every one of us created individually, given different gifts for what purpose? For the sake of the body, of the whole body. So I want us to pay attention to this very important detail in verse 5. It says, So we, being many, are one body in Christ. You know, years and years and years ago, and even when I was a young Christian, I would hear of this, a very sad story about the body of Christ. And when I became a Christian, I, one of the things that uh, uh, struck me was, why were there so many different denominations? Why were there so many different type of churches? And at one time, these denominations were so so so-called fixated in their ways and what they believe, how they want to worship, that they were not friends with another denomination. And even then, within the denominations or between churches, churches were also kind of divided. At one time, in the many years ago, I used to hear this term called ship stealing, whereby if members were to move from one church to another, the pastors would be calling the other pastor that the members have gone to a sheep stealer. And it was sad. And I know that there are in churches, in some churches whereby even amongst the ministries, there will be divisions and people would be divided. Oh, this member belongs to me. Oh, that member belongs. You know, this. you, you can't touch this member. This is my member. And so sadly, as we begin to read, and Paul addresses this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Paul says this, for when one says, I will follow Paul and another, I will follow, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? Paul was reprimanding them. He says that the moment we begin to think that we are divided, we forget that we belong to this same one body of Christ, that we become just normal human beings. Paul was against that. And this ought not to be. You know, when in John chapter 17, 
many will often call this the unanswered prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read this to you as Jesus prayed for all believers. He didn't make a distinction. He was praying for all believers. Verse 20 says this, I do not pray for this alone. He wasn't praying only for those listening, but he said this, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. The people who will come on. And when Jesus said this, I think he was, he was talking about us, people who will come into the faith. Jesus was praying for us. He says this in verse 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. You look at this set of verses, the heart, the, the, the burden upon Jesus' heart that the body of believers, the Christ followers may be one. And this is repeated four times. In these few verses, it's repeated four times. Jesus' prayer that we may be one. And then repeated two times. Why ought we be one? So that those who have yet to believe will believe as they see the oneness in us. How will the world believe when the body of Christ is divided? How will the world understand when they begin to see churches, denominations fighting against one another? When churches cannot fight to support one another? When Christians cannot learn to fight for one another, to love one another and to care for one another? You know, I thank God for the privilege to be living in a time and season like this. You know, in the last maybe 10 years or so, I've seen the body of Christ coming together. I've seen uh, the pastors working together from different denominations. For one, I was very privileged when I came on full-time. There are some of my closest friends who are not only pastors from the AG, but from independent churches, from the Anglican Church. You know, and we were working together to organize conference. And I believe many of you will remember the uh, Jubilee Day of Prayer where close to 50,000 Christians gathered together, regardless of denomination, to pray for our nation. You know, and, and I, I, I love this when the churches all over the world or in Singapore come together, regardless of what they may want to emphasize on, the way of worship, it doesn't matter. You know, some may like traditional form of worship, some like hymns, some like more, uh, uh, the, the more modern songs. It doesn't matter, all those are different modes in which we can connect ourselves with God. But the essential thing is that we all belong to the body of Christ. We all follow Jesus Christ. So it was good. It was good to, to hear uh, the, uh, the churches coming together to do prayers together, to do conferences together. And for Emmanuel, and for me personally, I've been blessed because of the friendship of many of these pastors and churches. I've been blessed by City Harvest. I think City Harvest was one of those churches in my early years as a full-time pastor to be inspired by what they were doing, to be inspired by a greater vision of what can be done. And I thank God for Cornerstone, for Pastor Young and the group of pastors who are there. They've come alongside to help us when we were not able, when we did not know how. They were always ready with wise counsel. Trinity Christian Centre, under the leadership of Pastor Dominic, They've always been a church that was ready to bless the greater body of Christ through the facilities, through the resources they have, through even the well-equipped, uh, skilled pastors who are well-trained. And of course, you know, as far back recently, uh, BBTC, the church that is just down the road in Badok, the pastors, the pastoral team and the senior pastors are friends of ours. And every time we ask them for something, they're so ready to just grant to us the materials, ready to use materials and says, please feel free to use them. You know, and I think of the various pastors who have come to minister to us. You know, Pastor David Dory, 
all the way from Australia have come with his heart to bless our congregation. Pastor Bruce Hills, you know, Pastor Martin Still, Pastor Benny, a friend of our church who's come, who has blessed us and ministered to us with all their heart, wanting to see the body of Christ here in Emmanuel grow strong in faith, strong in discipleship. You know, so we've been blessed. And then I go back to verse 6 to 8, whereby Paul writes and tells every believer, every individual who have been created uniquely, have been gifted differently. He says, use it and use it well. Whatever gifts that you have, use it well for the benefit of the body. You know, the, the, one of the stories that I came across as I was preparing this was the story of the Jerusalem Collection. You know, this Jerusalem collection was something that, that Paul wanted to do. And uh, Brother Han Hui in the CE class had talked about how Paul had wanted this Jerusalem collection. He went round to the Gentile churches to collect money to bless the, the believers, the Judean, the Jewish believers who were in Jerusalem. At the point, they were having a famine in Jerusalem. And Paul went round and, and implored, uh, encouraged the churches, the Gentile uh, churches to begin to give. And surely they did. What was Paul's agenda? Paul, of course, Paul wanted to help the church in Jerusalem that was in trouble because there they was, uh, was a famine time. But more than just helping them with that, Paul had a greater purpose to remind the Jewish believers that the Gentile believers were their brothers that they were working together for the sake of the body of Christ. And I love this. I love this illustration that Paul, Paul did. And this is the same mindset that we want to have right here in Emmanuel. You know, it all started with Pastor Ang. You know, I, I, Pastor Ang is my pastor and I've learned a lot of things from him and Pastor Ang had a great heart. You know, when we moved from our every premise to Nomadic, we were moving around National Stadium, Plaza Hotel, then finally this piece of property. The, every premise was empty and we let it out to be used by Teen Challenge and there was a church that needed a place and for many years at a very a low sum of money, they were using it as a church. You know, and then that legacy carried on. I mean, even, even before we were carrying on, you know, I, I think of the Global Leadership Summit Global Leadership Summit is running into as many years. The number of people attending has crossed the thousand mark. It all started when Emmanuel opened the premise and says, sure, you can use our place, use our equipment. And GLS started in Emmanuel. So the legacy continued. A few years ago, about four to five years ago, the D6 conference, a conference intended to make strong families, started right here in Emmanuel. We offer them the place where it says you don't have to pay anything. Whatever you can afford, you can you, you give. But if you can't afford, it doesn't matter. Use this place because this is a place that God has given to us for the benefit of the body. And then I think of really even our, our Malayalam service. It all started because there was a group of Malayalis brothers and sisters who had to be evicted, who had to leave the place that they were using and they were looking for a place and we says, yeah, why don't we use the place here in Emmanuel? There are classes available. And they started humbly in one of the classrooms in level two. And they grown. From there, they grown to they were big enough to find another place and they left. And then Brother Chako asks, Pastor, can we therefore start one Malayalam service right here? And that's how we started. We wanted to bless the body of Christ. And I think of a church called Kingdom Heart. They started, they wanted to pioneer a work. They started in the classrooms. They used the praise hall. They grew, they, they grew till they were strong enough. And today they've established themselves. They've registered themselves. They are church. They were they are a church running. I believe close to maybe a hundred people. And even an Indonesian church called Mawasharon. They are registered. They are now uh, worshipping in a church, uh, in a hotel in Orchard Road. How did they start? They wanted a place, and we say, yeah, sure. There are many rooms right here in Emmanuel. This all belongs to God. Use it. Whatever that you want to give, you give as a love offering, but we're not going to charge you anything because we wanted to bless the body of Christ. 
And it's the same thing. I mean, many of you have been impacted by the video that the team did, the missions and the, the creative media, the CMD team did on the missions, what we do for our brothers and sisters out there in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Sarawak, in Pakistan, in Nepal. All that because we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the body of Christ. Do you know that you are part of a bigger body? And do you know that you have a big part to play? God created you individually and God has gifted you. I don't believe and I do not believe for a moment that any one of us can dare say that I am not gifted at all. I got nothing to offer to the body. I believe every one of us have something to give to the body. An individual in the kingdom of God cannot exist alone. He exists in the body of Christ as part of the body. You know, I wrote this and I wanted to just read this to you because I, I feel that this is so important for us to understand that we do not exist alone. We always exist for something bigger than us. The individual exists for the sake of the body. He cannot say he has no need of others. He is supposed to contribute to the body so that it is for the profit of all. An individual exists within a cell to bless the cell. When the cell is blessed, the individual will be blessed. A cell exists within the zone they belong to. A zone exists within the service they belong to. And the service exists within the church they belong to. And the church exists within the organization, the denomination they belong to or they belong to the greater body of Christ. The same principle works right across. You exist for the sake of the body you belong to and you're there to support. The moment a unit decides that they are alone, they don't need others, they don't look out for others and serve others, the body will suffer. So I pray today, as we talk about Antioch, we know that we do not and cannot afford to run alone. We cannot afford to run alone. God has created us. God has gifted us so that the body can be blessed. When we each begin to serve out our God-given gifts and serve upwards and forward, the body of Christ wins. You know, the last uh, month, I, I've been just really, my mind has been, uh, this, this particular slogan has been running through, you know, uh, in my mind. And it says this, a win for one is a win for Team Jesus. And so right when we begin to live for others, we begin to bless others, we begin to look out and want to see a win for somebody, Team Jesus wins. So I hope you're blessed by this. And remember one of the key words that our church have is this word called Afufa. All for one and one for all. And we begin to understand this. The church of Jesus Christ wins. God bless you. You know, today is Communion Sunday and uh, so appropriately, this is a great time to do Communion. So if you can, uh, take hold of your emblems, get hold of your biscuit, your bread, get hold of your, your grape juice, your ribena, or whatever it is, and then let's come together. Why I, why I say Communion is so significant for today's message is when Jesus sat down with His disciples, he set down something that he wanted the believers, the followers, his followers to continue to do. And as we come, come around the communion table, this is almost like our trademark. A trademark that as long as you do communion, you acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. You acknowledge what Jesus has done. You remember what Jesus has done. And your hearts are united, your spirit are united as one. So if you can take hold of the communion, I think many of you will be familiar with what is written in 1 Corinthians 11. When Paul writes, it says, on the night that Jesus uh, was betrayed, he took hold of the bread, he broke it and he passed around to his disciples. And he says, take it, eat it. This is my body broken for you. What a powerful message. Jesus died for you and for me so that we can belong to the same body. Let's partake of this bread together. In 
the same way I believe that that night when Jesus lifted up the wine glass and he passed it around to the disciples he says take this drink this in remembrance of me and he was projecting ahead for them as they look at the the color of the wine close to blood that Jesus wanted them to know that his blood would be shed for them for you and for me so that our sins can be washed away that we have a new life and not only a new life not only eternal life but we all come into the family of God the family of our Lord Jesus Christ so let's partake of this wine together thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord let me pray for you as we come to a close I've set forward some uh, reflection questions for us to think through. Uh, I want to encourage you to do this together with your cell group. You know, it's always good when we begin to do a reflection, a, a deeper study of the Word of God, a deeper study of the message that's just been shared with your fellow brothers and sisters because each one of us will bring perspective that we individually may not see. And when we begin to give as the different ones who have different perspectives begin to share the body is blessed. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word today and uh, thank you for your love for us. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. We remember, we remember your sacrifice. We remember what you did for us. And we also remember the words you've given to us. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to help us to walk this life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us, for counselling us, for leading us. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name as this word has been spoken for, that you will minister to my brothers, my sisters. That Lord, as we know today that we are, we are individuals, you know, you have made us different, you have created us uniquely, and also you've gifted us. That Lord, each one of us will take the gift that we've given us and we will put it to good use. We will use it for the furtherance of a kingdom that the body may be blessed. I pray for those who uh, may have a, you know, who may feel that they are not ready to, to step out. They, 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 are, they are not bold enough. They are frightened. I pray in Jesus' name that you will give them boldness. That as they step out, they begin to experience you in such a different way. That they'll begin to see their gift blessing the body of Christ. So we thank you Lord, as I commit every listener listening, bless them. Lord, be with them in a very tangible way. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. Children. 
What a great message by our senior pastor, Pastor Mark. We believe that God is speaking to many of us. Let's not just be hearers of the words, let's be doers of the words as well. Um, if you have any testimony or prayer requests, you can scan the QR code or enter the link to share with us. To keep updated with whatever is happening in church, you can visit our website at www.emmanuel.org.sg or Instagram or Facebook. So take care, have a good week and we'll see you soon.